Am I in the right place? I mean, the right company and the right role? This is a good question that sometimes is worth asking and let's explore it together. If already for a while we experience symptoms like often procrastination, mood swings, low energy, hard to wake up in the mornings or frustration at work, or there are very little results, then I just want you to know that it is possible that things are mostly otherwise. It's possible that we mostly enjoy what we are doing. We mostly do it well. There are good results. We go with inspiration to work and uh, there's very little procrastination. And I want to share with you one story and then give you five steps how you can check in with yourself and if necessary, go from A to be. Usually as a mentor I work not only with the CEO of the company but also with other managers and uh, in one client company one of the C-level people didn't want to go deeper in any topics in sessions and he also started to skip sessions and some months later the department that he was responsible for was completely shut down and erased from this company. Before that Nobody in the company wanted to admit, and I mean admit to themselves, that this is what is going to happen, but this was unavoidable. My takeaways from this story, it is always okay to make mistakes, because in business we are making bets, but if we sometimes persist in something, it can keep us in an illusion. And then for the CEO, it can be hard to admit that we've been traveling many, many miles in the wrong direction and we should change the course, and then we just keep going the titanic size ship in the same direction we were going based on a hope although the intuition might be already saying something else and then for the crew i mean the the other managers and the team members it is hard to confront because there's fear uh, fear for personal career and finances and also it is and i know this from my own experience it is hard to hear what I actually think and believe in when there's someone up there very confidently saying something that this is the direction we will go, everything will be cool. So we are predisposed to trust the leaders. If there is this illusion, then the further we go into it, then the longer we will need to go back and go the other course. And also, this is one of the biggest risk factors for post-situation burnout, because burnout happens when we have invested a lot of our life energy into something and it collapses. All right, here are five steps to know if we are in the right role and in the right company. First, it is to observe the symptoms. Second, it is to observe the results. Third, to have inner dialogue. Fourth, to speak our truth. And five, to adapt. So first, observe the symptoms. If you have any of these that I mentioned in the beginning, that means something, you shouldn't ignore them. Let's take some examples. Procrastination. That could mean that something in our psyche, unconsciousness, in our body says this is not what we should be doing now. We should be doing something else instead. And then just trying to force to do, it's ignoring the body's messages. Or frustration. Frustration is anger and anger could be at ourselves for not listening and obeying our own inner voice about what should actually be done. Or sleepiness. Wake up in the morning, very hard to get up from the bed and go to work. Maybe this is your body telling that you should not go to work to be back in this bubble, but instead you should go someplace else, like to a forest or just a walk in the city and reflect from the outside on what is happening. Mood swings, like one day up, one day down, could mean that you are connecting into the bubble of illusions and then falling out from it, and then connecting into it and then falling out from it. So therefore, Pay attention to how your body feels, how your emotions feel, do you procrastinate and do not just condemn yourself like, oh, so bad that I'm doing this, but instead take it as a message, as a symbol and then ask, what does this message or symbol mean and how can I go with its energy? All right, I don't want to wake up and go to work. Okay, but what do I want to do? I want to go to spa. All right, go to spa. I mean, really, literally. I've had mentoring sessions with CEOs in, in a spa, very good ones. So go to spa, relax there, and reflect from the outside on your situation and uh, what could be causing you this not willingness to go into it again. Second step is to observe the results. I look at myself as a part of a system where I do work, I do input, and that input produces outputs that hopefully create outcomes and these outcomes are the results. Let's say if I'm a designer then the output of my work is a presentation. 
but the outcome should be a purchase. So the question is, does my work produce purchases? And if it does not, that means something. And it doesn't matter if there's this ethos in the company that, yes, but we need to do these things because in a year's time or two years' time they will become important. There are very few companies nowadays that can afford this type of mindset. Unless you work in an R&D department of a deep tech company, then it's a different game. But otherwise, we should see how what I do today will bring results for the main metrics for the, of the company that are important in a foreseeable future. This quarter, next quarter, the quarter afterwards maybe, but not after one or two years. Because if it's not so, then uh, we can try to persuade with mind ourselves, but our intuition will say that we are actually doing nice to have things. Because there's something more important than that should be done that can bring results now. And uh, by the way, I've seen also three problems related to results. So first is we don't know what are meaningful results. Let's again say I as a designer am, am told that the result of my work should be how much the clients love the presentation. Do they give uh, positive feedback? No, it's bullshit. It's not important. What is important is do they buy eventually? So do I see the sales metrics growing? So we should know what are the one, two, maximum three companies, North Star metrics that I'm contributing to with my work. So this is first. Second is, okay, we know these metrics, but we are using wishful thinking when we interpret the results. Let's say we know that in order for us to either break even or to reach the necessary goals, we need 20% growth this year. And then uh, seven months have passed and the growth is, let's say, 2%. And we're like, oh, it's, at least it's growing. It's nice. Let's keep doing this, what we are doing. No, let's change something because it, it means that after three, four months, we might be already in the red in finances. And the, then the third one, which I already mentioned, is future thinking. That we today do stuff that will make sense after year two or three. But meanwhile, we are not doing stuff that would make sense now, today. All right, after observing the results, then the step number three is to have inner dialogue. So you have so far observed the symptoms and observed the results. What's the inner dialogue about? It is from two perspectives. You look from the company's perspective and then you look from the you perspective. So from the company perspective, I always suggest to imagine that you are the only owner of this company. So this company where you work, it 100% belongs to you and you can do whatever you want in it. And then you reassess, is this what this person, meaning me, <laughs> I look at myself as an employee, this person is doing something that he's told to do. Is this the most important thing? Would I, as the sole owner, ask this person to do the same things? Or would I change something in what this person is doing? Or maybe I would just let this person go. Or I would pursue completely different goals instead. So this way we can reflect on the big zoom level and avoid this group thing that is in the company and try to think of our own truth, how I would do the things there. You see what type of activities you feel should be done now. Maybe you will get to the same conclusions that exactly the same thing should be done but I can bet that there will be something different that you will find out and number two you look from your own perspective you look that okay these things that I'm doing do they mostly bring me joy do I use most of my strengths know-how and talents do I want to keep doing these things for next year so you use your own feelings as a guide here because if you are in a position where you are doing something that you feel actually shouldn't be done or should be done differently or later and at the same time you are doing stuff that you don't feel great doing, then this is not a recipe for success. One more thing here is that what I'm doing today is something that I want to become greater at. So if the answer is no, I want to stop doing this instead of becoming greater at it, then again, it gives you additional clarity. Here's one hook in this inner dialogue. The fear and hopes still play a big role. And therefore, it is super important to do it in a, such an environment where you are not feeling stressed and rushed, that you can feel how your inner voice is speaking to you. And I also want to assure you that even, even if it all would mean that you would need to go to work to other place or if you are the owner of the company even to close it down even if that would mean that 
it still would be all okay. Everything would be all okay with you. I'm not saying that you have to go to other place or you, you should close down the company. I'm saying completely different thing that there's no reason to fear. That's, that's the main message. So that you can put the fear aside and just look at reality as it is. And reality for you is a combination of how it feels and what you think should be the right course of action. And now the fourth step is to speak your truth. So this means that you initiate a conversation with your direct manager or with the CEO of the company or if you are the CEO with your co-founders, the board. There's another episode about creative collaboration. You could use some principles from there when you are discussing it. But try to approach this conversation from a different perspective than you would do any other work meeting. Imagine that you and the CEO are two very good friends who have met in a pub for an evening chat, even if it's in the morning in the office. But actually, I would suggest such conversations to the outside. First, you share your feelings with the CEO about what you feel about the strategy, the work that person in your role, meaning you, is doing, but try to do it in a detached manner. And instead of saying, you should do this, this is wrong, just try to share how you feel about it. I feel that if I keep doing this, this is not contributing best to the company. To do it in a soft, non-attacking manner. So this is first giving the feedback on the company perspective. So what's good for the company? And then also sharing how you feel about yourself, that this and this is not bringing me joy. I've reflected and I really feel that this is not because of some temporary issues, but this is just not what I feel is bringing me joy. Instead, I would want to do this. I would want to focus more on these things in my work. How do you feel? Is it possible somehow to change things so that I can do more of what I love, what I'm great at, what I want to become even greater at? So this type of conversation. Well, and then we come to the step number five, which is to adapt. So if the previous four steps were done properly, then something will change. And as I said before, this something can be something very small. It can be approach, attitude, mindset. But sometimes these are bigger changes. Maybe your work role will change. Maybe some colleagues will be let go or replaced. Maybe you will be replaced. And just be ready for it and go with this flow, trusting that it will be for the good because you have given the best input you could for the best future of the company and also for the best future of yourself. Because we know that if we keep doing stuff that doesn't feel, doesn't bring fulfillment, we're going straight to burnout. And if you are leading someone and you observe that they are procrastinating a lot, starting to look like approaching burnout, then it's advisable not to confront them like, hey, why are you procrastinating so much at work? I see mostly news and uh, Facebook open in your computer but to try to approach uh, the conversation as a mentor, that you as a mentor want to support this person and align this person with the best possible path, professional path for them so that they can flourish there and uh, produce good results. All right, to recap, if you experience any of these emotional bodily symptoms like procrastination, mood swings, low energy, then it might be the time to reassess if you are in the right role and or in the right company and after the reassessment to speak about it with involved people and to adapt with courage and gratitude to what is going to follow afterwards. And if this resonates with you, please comment, share your experience in comments or ask questions and follow me on social media and YouTube. See you in next episode.